Thank you very much. I seem to remember some piece of research in my youth which said that the police, you might have thought that police drama copies the police, but actually it's the other way around, <laughs> that, that the police actually okay. Do, okay. do, and yeah. therefore you can see different styles of That's policing. Absolutely. Can I give you two very good examples of that? One, which is quite scary. They're so juicy actually. They're so the life and might be good. You know, the, the, you, you have seen, um, and indeed we have watched police from them, Ian, you will know that, coppers who who, uh, when they've got a gun, armed, armed police mm. will, will be like this and then turn a corner and, and yeah. straighten their arms, yes? That comes from 1970s cop shows where they wanted to get the gun in the same frame so you have a close-up with a gun in the frame. <laughs> and, and it's actually absolutely not the way to hold a gun. You should keep your arm very steady like that as you move around. But when they do that... It's a, cutting, it's a cutting decision. It, absolutely. And the second one was an actual personal experience when we were doing the Thames Valley series. Um, the Sweeney had that was on. This was in the early 1980s, and uh, we were in a in a traffic car that had it was chasing a speeder. When there, the police speedometer went down, which is not a good way to go after a speeder. And so they pulled into the police garage, and this guy who in those days had the same amount of white hair as I now do, and he came out and said, "You're the BBC," and I said, "Yes." She said, "You bastards are ruining my cars." And I said, I mean, you've been accused of bias or that, <laughs> but ruining your cars, how is that? And he said, well, you know, you, do, you show the Sweeney, don't you? I said, yes. I said, well, nobody, since the Sweeney's been on, nobody ever gets out of their car, even if they're delivering a parking ticket. They dive out and slam the door. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, uh, if you want another one, it's the CSI effect which is now yes. defeating juries all around uh, Britain because they want to know why in this crime the forensics have not come out with who done it. And it, it's also producing vast numbers of people who want to be CSI. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Good. Yeah, that's which, good. That may be good. But, that is good. Uh, can I just ask one... Good for criminology courses. Yes. Good for criminology courses. <laughs> this is all good. Uh, can I just ask one very quick question, um, which comes to my own interest, I suppose, which is, th th it seems to me the police are caught on a terrible um, dilemma, which is that the media... No, bad stories sell, and that's the nature of news. And um, good policing works that doesn't make a story. It's a philosophical and, problem. And and it seems to me that in a in a really relatively safe society, we are nevertheless we we now know that um, local newspapers have the same um, have the same incidence of mortality by violent means as national newspapers. So you hunt around. So people get more frightened because they think that yeah. there's a death happening just around the corner. Um, well, there's actually, a simple way of testing this, yeah. which is to ask the audience, in the population of London, 8 million people, a service population of another 3 million every day, so 11 million people, how many murders are there a year? And so I'll give you some figures. Is it over 1,000? Who believes it's over 1,000? Good. <laughs> Who below, believes it's below 100? You're very optimistic, okay? Uh, it's actually 140. Now, uh, out of 12 million people, and given that the vast majority of those, I'm afraid, are young men killing each other, as it were. And 320 nationalities. And so all the language language groups. Groups. It is a very safe place. But you're quite right. I mean, you are quite correct on, on, on this position about media. Now, that's where that Mori poll has come from. Yeah. People are more concerned about it than ever before. But, Gene, I mean, this is more your area, but. Um, the study I did some years ago of looking at changing media report news yeah. and uh, f fiction about crime since 1945. What that suggested was that in the 40s and 50s, this kind of accentuation of the bad news was not the case. It's always been the case the media latch on to more serious crimes. So they distort what the crime picture is, they make you think every crime is murder and so on. But the extent to which they actually focus on failure and are all constantly harping on the worst things are not. Um, emphasizing success changed from the 1960s onwards. And there are other studies comparing, for example, Norway, for some reason it was Norway, and, uh, and this country, and they showed that Norwegian newspapers just don't sensationalize crime in the way we do. So I don't think we could say that the media are kind of governed by laws that are absolutely universal. There are political and economic and cultural conditions of this kind of very dramatic and uh, uh, misleading media picture. I have a couple of thoughts on this which might be of interest. First of all, there is a drug which we should all be worried about, but that drug is adrenaline. And adrenaline comes from fear. And you can get it second and third hand. You can get it across the dinner table when somebody tells you a story about what's happened to them, and you can get it from reading the papers. So that's one of the reasons why bad news sells. 
Secondly, the philosophical problem is it's very hard to tell a story about something that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to measure things that haven't happened. And so what you get in the key performance indicators are arrests, convictions, things like that, speedy to, to bring trials to justice and so on. But saying, well, nothing happened, it's quite, you know, quite difficult. And I've been talking to various friends, of, uh, the people around this table, uh, like Dennis O'Connor, years ago when he was responsible for KPIs, and we were looking at proper warning dent policing, and I kept saying, would you try and include this? And he said, it's really too difficult at that point. I, I, the degree to which KPIs change all the time um, is something I, I haven't done well, it's kept up with. You have to be a kind of Sudoku fan, I think, to, to, to manage that. But um, the, the point I'm really getting at is that the non-event in the culture of policing is quite hard to be proud of. What did you do today? Nothing. It was really great on my beat. Absolutely nothing happened. I met the greengrocer, I met the boy, and you know, I found a cat. Oh, what did you do? Oh, well, I saw the fact that big guys were bigger than I was and all. You know, I mean, just straight playground stuff, okay? And that's part of the police culture. So there's a problem.